Cowabunga! Cowabunga! I'm Guy Fieri, and I love that show, Colorado Culture and Cuisine. We're about to get you entered into Flavortown, and you guys are going to get crunked the fuck up. So listen and enjoy. I'm from fucking outer space, and I'm about to go into my time machine. So you guys have an awesome time, and listen to the fucking podcast. Oh yeah, and by the way, that guy Brad Blair is fucking awesome. So sweet, now you're about to get in here. Phil. What? Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. Welcome to the Colorado Culture and Cuisine Radio Podcast. I don't even know what the name of it is yet. I'm kind of coming up with that. I'm enjoying some Corvus Coffee Roasters from... Denver, Colorado. They have a coffee, um, Santa Barbara from Apaneca y Lamatepec, El Salvador. That was really interesting. Is uh, I went down to their location in downtown, uh, well near downtown Colorado. I haven't really been to many of the roasters uh, directly downtown. I thought it was really cool. Uh, when you try to find their place, they have a big giant sign that has Corvus on it. And uh, they had their own freaking parking lot. So, you know, I made a Yelp review and I was talking about how I, you know, I really appreciate the fact they have their own freaking parking because as someone who's disabled, it's hard for me to park a car sometimes if you have to turn into stuff and move it around the wheel a lot, you know, all that kind of stuff. If you have a jacked up bum arm like I've got. So, finding their location was pretty epic, and I thought it was really cool is when you first go in, you see this, like, um, giant, like, uh, block kind of thing with uh, uh, fire for um, natural gas, whatever, to provide heat in the winter. So, even if it's cold as hell and you just want to go over there and get a cup of coffee and have coffee and, and then head off to work or whatever you're doing or, you know, share some drinks with friends, you know, they're creating a culture of, of, uh, of coffee hangouts, which is completely different than most places. Um, and as soon as you go in, you know, on your right hand side, you're, there's a, you know, big giant display with, um, not only giant, but almost floor to wall display of all their coffees with cards that says where the coffee comes from, you know, on the back, it says the varietal, which is bourbon. It was, uh, the elevations, 1700 meters. Um, the farmer's name, Guillermo and Miguel Mendez, how it was processed. It was washed, you know? And then describes it. So on the back of it, they're talking about the Santa Barbara. Um, Santa Barbara comes directly from El Salvador. It's an ongoing relationship, which we prize very highly. The family is known as being a community-oriented farm in their region, and several other coffees have won the Cup of Excellence. Santa Barbara sits on an extinct volcano, which provides great soil for developing this coffee. And the farm has two wet mills for ensuring the finest processing so i thought it was really cool and they put their uh the actual the roast date on there which is pretty impressive um so you know i'm drinking a coffee that's a day old basically today's the 15th and it was roasted on the 14th so um the first thing i asked was hey you know this is this is a sealed bag you know can you cut it open for me so i can look at the beans because now um i'm not going to put up with any of these roasters anymore um, and sealing your bags and you're buying these beans that are completely over roasted. You know, if you want over roasted beans and you want hot milk, go to Starbucks because us coffee snobs really shouldn't have to put up with your crap roasting skills. And Corvus sets that apart where they opened it up and I was able to look at the beans, smell them, you know, see how they were roasted. And the profile was great. Um, they roast it to its full potential. It's a, you know, more on the, of a darker mahogany wood color, not burned death color, like an espresso bean, where you're trying to get it to its highest of highest potentials of complete dark uh, smoke taste, which is fine if you want smoke flavored coffee, but you want to still have the flavor profiles that are there. I'm not a professional roaster, but I know enough to know that if you're burning your beans, you're not going to get us coffee snobs there. And you're going to be developing a coffee culture which just wants hot milk as opposed to having a coffee culture like Corvus who also had taps at their location. And so they're creating this bartender 
curated coffee style in which you can get hopped coffee that's on tap or iced coffee that's on tap. Um, I'm not sure if they have a liquor license, but it'd be pretty cool. Or you can bring your flask in there probably and, you know, add a little bit of bourbon to that stuff, you know. And so they're creating a coffee culture, which is totally opposite of what most people are doing. And I was really impressed. And I'm definitely going to go back, um, maybe turn it into my my hangout spot to do all my homework because I need a spot that I can park at and do all my homework and get it done and have shit tons of coffee so I can provide myself with that you know I ended up finding on Yelp um, a girl told me about Pablo's Coffee I'm really excited to check them out I guess they're one of the first roasters in Denver that was doing high quality coffee um, I'm not sure when they started, but I'm really looking forward to checking them out. Um, I'm going to go on the Corvus Roasters website, which is corvuscoffee.com. And you're greeted with this really simple and elegant um, type of website, which on the design aspect, people who actually know, you know web design, these guys know what the hell they're doing. It's pretty simple. There's a search or store button on the left-hand side, and there's five decisions in the middle. Home, shop, coffee blog, our mission, and espresso bar. So if you can't figure that out, you're a jackass. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, clicking on the on the shop, you know, they, they take you to their single origins, their, their blends. Um, and I thought was really interesting is that they have a Costa Rica I'm not seeing it on their website but they have a Costa Rica that's um, a decaf it's the Latarazu uh, part of Costa Rica which has like literally the best coffee that you could possibly find in my opinion that has tons of um, honey flavor and raspberries and just different types of flavor in there um, which I was completely baffled by um, just because basically when you're you're doing decaf essentially you're just ruining the coffee <laughs> that's my opinion I, I mean i guess there's probably good decafs and that was that's probably the one good decaf but i don't see why you would turn a lot terrazzo into into decaf but hey they're trying something out and they they're appeasing me um the prices are fairly decent um it's mostly in the 12 bag um the 12 ounce um bag variety instead of the 300 gram 10 ounce kind of thing that uh the Huckleberry is doing, which Huckleberry is selling theirs at the same pretty much price, so they're, they're competing, direct, Huckleberry is competing directly with Corvus, which is pretty tight. Um, I'm looking forward to trying their Ethiopia, um, although 12 ounces for $19, uh, this better be a cup of excellence, because that's a lot of friggin' money. Um, But I'm really impressed so far, and they also have a subscription service on there um, that has its own freaking link, so you just click on the membership link, and I've look at this, so you just press the thing, and it's $160 for the one roaster's choice, and it's a six-month, you can do a six-month membership, a 12-month membership for $324. And they'll send you freshly roasted coffee of your choice every month, two 12-ounce bags per month for six months. So that's pretty tight, especially if you had a, a business um, fairly close. I don't know how they do their shipping, but um, you could really be able to get, uh, or even if you were doing the five. They, and also, yeah, it was really interesting, is if you're a business and you either wanted to try out our new coffee or you're utilizing them as your main supplier. They have five pound bags um, just on top of the display. So you go in, you grab your five pound bag, you pay for it and you dip out of there, um, which is really important. Uh, just some, a little aspect, that little, something a little simple that if you're a supplier or you're a, you know, a coffee house or you're a freaking pizza hut that wants to provide a you know top quality coffee you could send your little kid in there you know and have him go on his bike and get the five pound bag of coffee and come back to the store you know so it's a big deal compared to you know some of the other shops like uh even you know coffee and mori they do a lot of commercial sales too um 
and you just go and talk to a barista and a, hey can i get a you know my five pound bag for my company and you know they, they would just give it to you you know or set it aside for you in a bag and they would set it aside but this was different you know and this was something that it was subtle but it i mean for the business owner it makes a big big difference because even if all their staff was completely you know bogged down they could still send a friend and say hey we need to get this five pound bag in the store to get coffee on the table and they could do it which was that just blows my mind um, and that's something small that, you know, a, a coffee roaster knows what they're doing. Secondarily, on the Colorado culture and cuisine, for the culture side of things within Denver, I find this really interesting in Colorado that I'm staring out my backyard in beautiful Arvada, Colorado. Um, there's trees here, unlike Denver, and I can see the skies. And out my door, or out of my porch, like half a block, is a tent set up for hatch chili roasting. And pretty much all over Colorado, they have hatch chili roasters where you can go buy a Ziploc bag pound full of hatch chilies. And this is amazing. Um, I haven't lived in a place like this in a while. Arizona used to do it when I lived there, and it's pretty cool. So if you haven't had hatch chilies before... It's usually what's in your green verde chili, and they're not roasted normally. Um, they kind of cook them down a lot of times, or probably boil them, so they don't have all that flavor character that um, hatch chilies would have. So here in Colorado, you can pretty much go to any farmer's market. Um, I've got a farmer's market down the street from my house, and they just sell the chilies there. And on the side of the roads here, they have um, chili roasters, and you can go get a bag of chilies, and then you you know add them into you know ranchos huevos that you're making or um, eggs ranchers in english um or you can just you know uh, make your own salsa you, know, you need to just throw five or six of those things in a blender blend it up and chill it and then serve it uh, for salsa i mean that's that's how the mexicans have been doing it for years and the people of colorado and arizona and all these these cultures right here so it's a very important part of the culture here in colorado the chili culture is is pretty big and i haven't been to any of the barbecue festivals yet but i would assume that any barbecue guy who knows what he's doing would do a uh, a green chili um brisket that would be just phenomenal so, as I said in my last podcast, fuck your state, come to Colorado, because it's better. And even if you don't want to live in the city, and you want to live in the middle of nowhere, you can do that. And gentrification is a bad thing here. Um, going throughout a lot of Denver things, I'm, I'm realizing there's a lot of uh, dominant issues, even in the neighborhood that I live, where there's tons of gentrification going on, where they're bulldozing entire neighborhoods and putting up silly condos. And you could check out some of those blunders with the hashtag Denver Fugly, um, which is pretty interesting. They just basically showcase all the fugliest things of Denver, and uh, it's a lot of fun. I hope you guys have enjoyed this podcast. Please go on to our Facebook, which I will link in the show notes, which is Colorado Culture and Cuisine, where I go around and I take an adventure an epic looking into while I'm studying sociology in school I get to have awesome coffee and check out cool restaurants please become part of the conversation and uh, hook us up and I will hook you guys up with awesome podcasts and content thank you so much Brad Blair Colorado Culture and Cuisine out strengthen my I've lost everything and made me who I saw a dark night sky. Shot string out I took back everything I was talking about. Took it back, took it back, took it all back. Can I?
I may get up to you. Can I make it up to you? Could I scream into the ground? Scream into the ground. You're not around.